Whoa. Team. Over the summer, we partnered with a company called Learning Resources that makes the Beaker Creature Liquid Reactor Super Lab. We then made the video a super-sized bath bomb and will ice cream melt on the way to outer space. At the end of the year, they asked me if I would do live science experiments at their setup at the New York City Toy Fair. I, of course, said yes. When trying to think of which experiments to do, they asked me if I had anything that would work well to demo their new limited edition color-changing creatures. This then prompted me to do what a good science guy does when they don't know something. Jump on the internet and start doing some research. What I found is one of the oldest, but perhaps one of the coolest science experiments in the books, the iodine clock reaction. I really like this sweatshirt, and so I'm gonna switch out into my Cali hoodie, because <laughs> that's like the lab hoodie. So if I get stuff on it, I don't, I don't really care. Okay, now the first version of this experiment, you can actually do at home because all the chemicals you can buy at your local drugstore. First pour 130 milliliters of warm water into a glass. Then crush up a 500 milligram vitamin C tablet, also known as ascorbic acid. And then add this to the water. Make sure to stir up the water to fully dissolve the tablet. From here, you will add 12 milliliters of 10% povidine iodine. This mixture is called solution A. Okay, so when you add the povidone iodine to this solution uh, with the crushed up vitamin C tablet in it, it should go back to clear. That's actually what you want. Next, add one teaspoon of cornstarch to 40 milliliters of boiling water. Then add 100 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide. This is solution B. From here, you will mix the two solutions and start to count out loud. And go. Okay, that was pretty awesome, but as you guys could see, it takes a very long time for the actual reaction to happen. And so now I wanna show you a version that you'd probably see in science class. Uh, we're gonna be using stronger chemicals, and so let's see the difference that it makes. Okay, for the more sciencey version, we're gonna pour one liter of warm water and add three grams of sodium sulfite and 14 grams of citric acid. This is solution one. Next, we're going to dissolve 14 grams of potassium iodate into one liter of water. This is solution two. From here, we're gonna add one tablespoon of cornstarch to 100 milliliters of boiling water and stir until it's completely dissolved. We then pour out 200 milliliters of solution one and add 20 milliliters of this starch solution to it. Last, we add 100 milliliters of our solution two. Start counting and... Whoa! <laughs> so fast! <laughs> now, one of the big differences that you can see with the sciencey chemicals, uh, the more powerful ones, is that the turnover time is a lot quicker, meaning it goes from clear to this dark color really fast. Also, with this one, the color is actually a lot darker in general. It's not really quite blue, it's more of this kind of like used oil color. Um, now, something else really, really cool about this reaction is if you mix the reactants from, let's say, beaker to beaker or container to container, you might expect that the color would change maybe like on one side first, but I'm gonna show you guys what actually happens. Check this out. There we go. <laughs> now what we just saw is that the whole solution turned color at the exact same time, and here's how it works. In our solution one, we have sodium sulfite and citric acid. Mixing these two together gives us bisulfite. In our second solution, we dissolve potassium iodate in water, which gives us potassium ions and iodate ions. When these two solutions are mixed together, two reactions start happening at the same time. The first reaction gives us iodine. 
However, because there is still bisulfite around in our solution, the iodine is turned back into iodide almost instantly, keeping the solution looking clear. After some time though, the reaction creating bisulfite runs to completion, meaning our supply of bisulfite runs out too. This allows the iodine molecules to proliferate, and when iodine reacts with the starch, it produces this very dark blue color. Oh, look at, oh, that's so crazy. Like the starch at the bottom is like so much bluer. Ooh. Weird. It's super cool though. Team. So we made it to New York. We tested the experiments today and everything's looking awesome. Uh, we loaded everything in, got all the chemicals all throughout New Jersey. So tomorrow is the show. We drop that thing in. One, two, three. Whoa. Now let's get that thing going. Three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> All right. This is here because Beaker Creatures are here. Beaker Creatures arrived this past summer and we are bringing, bringing bigger, better things. What's new about Beaker Creatures 2019? More creatures, more, more science, science, more fun. So this is Silver Arts 4. It's five times <clears throat> more dense than it is. And gonna, this is actually the real world. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think this is gonna work. Oh my god, it's work. Science is so cool. Three, Three, two, one. Woo! Oh. I can't wait to do this at home. We're about roughly five minutes out. Um, our first demo, actually our first couple demos have gone super awesome. Um, as always, doing live science experiments. Uh, very fun, it's really cool to actually do them in person because when you do videos from YouTube, you don't always get to see the reaction um, from the people watching the videos. And so doing them in person is always very rewarding. Um, I have a good feeling this one's gonna go very smooth, uh, but we're, we don't know, you know, it's science. There's always, always an element of surprise, so we'll see what happens. So before we do this for our audience, we're gonna do a test back here so that we know, generally speaking, how fast the reaction is gonna occur. Mix them in one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Great, six. Great timing, perfect. And we're ready. So Nick's gonna do some real science for us here today that's uh, actually got a tie into our paper creatures. So we'll talk uh, about that a little bit. I'm gonna turn this over to Nick. We're going to be doing a really fun reaction. So here's what we do. I'm going to mix these two solutions and I want everybody to count one, two, Alright, so there it is. Three, one, 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 two, three, four, five. Two. Wow. You see the magic in Nick House. That was a super cool experiment, was it not? We've got something even bigger and better short at 3.30. Baker Creature Science starring Nick Uhaus is about to explode. Three, two, one, go! Look at that. I told you we bring the extreme science. Nick Uhaus brings the extreme science, everybody. Look at that thing go. Baker Creatures is bringing out of this world science, and of course, you can do the home version of this completely safe in the new Alien Experiment Lab Kit. I'm back from Toy Fair, which went really well, and I brought with me some of the color-changing beaker creatures, and here's how they work. This is one of my favorite ones, Blizzard. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some warm water on Blizzard. Oh, wow. It, like, changes color immediately. <laughs> See here, this is... This is QB. <laughs> Makes sense, it's a cube. Really cold water. It's got some ice in it. Oh, yeah, they get really dark purple. Wow, that's really dark. Look at the color difference. That was so cool and it happened so fast. I mean, that's really light blue and that's very dark purple. Also, at the end of Toy Fair, after I did all of my experiments, um, I realized that we were gonna have some chemicals left over for the iodine clock reaction. So I sent them home to myself here in California 
And we also actually had backup as well. So we kind of had like almost double than what we needed. And so I started thinking on the airplane, I was like, if we have all these chemicals and the iodine clock reaction is really cool, well then we should try to see how big of an experiment we can do with the iodine clock reaction. And I was also curious of just like, would it sort of operate the same? Would we see it sort of turning color, maybe like slower if there was more of it? I don't know, but I wanna find out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to see how many chemicals we actually have and we're going to calculate what is the largest amount of reactants that we can create. We're gonna throw them all in my bathtub and we're gonna do the iodine clock reaction in my bathtub. All right, you rolling? Yep. Quiet on set, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Soup. We got some soup. Oh, well, that's, that's also sodium sulfite. That's potassium iodate. Pee on it. All right. So we have a hundred, roughly 150 grams. 148. Let me do some calculations. We're doing some calculations like good science people do because we have internet inside the house. We'd end up with five, seven point five gallons. That's pretty good. So we need 10 liters in each one of these buckets, which is about two and a half gallons. Okay, so we're gonna go with solution B first, which is gonna be 140 grams of potassium iodate in 10 liters of water, warm water. That was like, that was like 60 bucks. <laughs> Great. Smells good. Great. For now. Oh, Great. No. <laughs> I'm gonna sweep this up. All right. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Mmm. Non-contaminated. 140 gram arenos coming right up. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's gonna go in bucket A. Bucket 30 gram sodium sulfite. Yeah, closer. So the sodium sulfite, when you dissolve it in water, gives off fumes. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my mask on because it smells really bad and makes you cough. And we don't want that. Looks very dissolved. That's very good. We're gonna measure out 20 grams of cornstarch. <laughs> I can't tell what it is. Close enough. Oh, it's chunks in there. Okay, it's pretty good. Great. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we have our, this is our solution A, this is our solution B. Two of that, one of this. I'm gonna go ahead and dump these two first. I'm gonna dump this one into there. There we go. All right, that's base number one. Okay, <laughs> I just hope this works. Let's see what happens. And it's like very much looking like it's staining in my bathroom. Dude, I man. definitely am not gonna go in that bath. The fumes are really intense, but it totally worked. We're getting out of here. The fumes are too bad. The fumes are bad. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull the plug. It smells real bad in there. Okay, we're gonna let that drain. <laughs> now the bathtub looks like it's very stained. There's a, there's a small, there's a slight chance it might stay like that. 
but uh, we, we don't we can't we can't know for sure. Look at the color. This is awesome. Look at this. Wow. There's just so much of it. Oh, it's it's definitely staining the bathtub. <laughs> oh, it's definitely staining the bathtub. Oh, no. Inside here, you can see this kind of like precipitate. It almost looks like kind of like a powder down in there. When you move it all around, oh my gosh, it's so gross. I have totally stained the bathtub. <laughs> hey, hey guys, don't tell my girlfriend. Legit, thanks. So bizarre. Definitely a success. Now, then the next step is I just gotta clean it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We learned how to do an at home version of the iodine clock reaction. We learned how to do a sciencey version. We also learned why the iodine clock reaction works. And then we supersized it and we did it in my bathtub. We also got to see the new limited edition color changing beaker creatures. Uh, there's actually a link in the description below to the liquid reactor super lab that you saw in this video. If you have nieces or nephews, younger brothers or siblings or kids, this is the perfect gift to get them interested in science. Uh, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you really soon.